Welcome to everybody. It's fantastic to have you with us here this evening. My name is Sarah Bernstein. I'm the director of the Rossing Center for Education and Dialogue. Um, this is our first ever webinar. So uh, already new things are happening and here at the Rossing Center. And uh, this is the first time we've done this sort of a setup and we're delighted to uh, have the opportunity to do it. And uh, we're learning new things every day. Um, so in the, in the past few weeks, more and more of our activities at the Rossing Center have gone online. Uh, we're very busy. Uh, people sort of assume that since we work mainly in the education system, in schools and teacher training colleges, that maybe we're, there's nothing we can do right now. But in fact, uh, our Zoom account is uh, in constant use and uh, we're doing a lot of online activities. So that's great. I'm delighted to have with us uh, this evening three speakers. Um, Samia Wat, who is a friend and partner, uh, and wonderful Sami to, to be with you here online, seeing as we can't, I can't see you in person. Um, and Rabbi Rinat Svanya, uh, who I also know personally. Thank you for joining us, Rinat. It's great to have you with us. And Dr. Thabit Abu Ras, who uh, this is my first opportunity to, to get to know you. I hope we can meet in person. Uh, so. Soon, let's hope. Um, um, I'm also delighted that our facilitator tonight is going to be uh, John Munaya. John joined us in February for an internship uh, as part of his MA studies. I don't think he thought that this was quite how his internship was going to uh, turn out. Um, but uh, um, this whole webinar was John's idea. So we're delighted to have him with us uh, as our facilitator uh, tonight. And uh, he's already doing great work with us uh, at the Rossing Center and long may, may it uh, continue. So I'm going to turn it over to you, John. Well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, to those who are, uh, of course, online uh, via Zoom or Facebook, but of course, welcoming, I want to welcome the speakers, our three speakers. Before we start, I'm just going to lay out uh, the framework of this panel discussion. Uh, of course, Zoom uh, or any online platform is not perfect, so we're going to try and do our best. So the layout will be as following. Each speaker will be given around seven to eight minutes to talk about the coronavirus and its implications and main uh, issues within the community. And I will introduce each speaker and then they will speak. After all three speakers have said what they have to say, um, we will then have a conversation between the speakers. So this is a time where they can ask each other questions. Um, they can reflect on what they've said. Uh, they can compare and contrast uh, the different contexts. And at the end, we want to open it up to questions uh, and answers from you, the audience, via Zoom or Facebook. If you're on Zoom, there'll be a Q&A icon and you can click that icon and type in your uh, question. Or if you're on Facebook Live, you can write the, uh, your question on the live chat. We cannot select all the questions, so we apologize in advance if we don't select your questions. Uh, we have a limited amount of time, but uh, I'm sure uh, there'll be some interesting questions. So with that said, I'm going to introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker is Sami Awad. He is from Bethlehem and works in conflict and resolution and nonviolent resistance. He is also the founder of the Holy Land Trust, which is also based in Bethlehem. The Holy Land Trust is committed to supporting, training, and developing nonviolence in the Holy Land. In addition, Sami promotes uh, and engages in nonviolent truth telling, healing, and transformation, work in Palestine and worldwide. And he also has a BA in political science, an MA in international relations, and a doctoral degree in divinity. So we welcome you, Sami, and the floor is yours. Thank you, John, for the introduction. Thank you, Sarah, for uh, holding the space and for the partnership and the work uh, we continue to do even during these, uh, these times. Uh, so I'll start by saying uh, that initially, yes, I would start by saying I'm from Bethlehem, but now I have to be very specific and say from Bejala. And the big reason for this is that 
in the last five weeks, I haven't been able to set foot in Bethlehem. Uh, as many people know, uh, when it came to the Middle East, uh, Bethlehem and Bejada specifically were the first hard hit uh, areas uh, with the virus. And very thankful to uh, the owners of the hotel, actually, the Angel Hotel, where the tour group was, they immediately uh, did everything to take care of the situation and called in the Palestinian Authority and immediately the whole community went into quarantine. So we are probably the longest of all the people here that are uh, trapped in our homes. And then just to inform people that just two hours ago, the Palestinian Authority declared another whole month of uh, restrictions on movement uh, on the Palestinian living under uh, its control. And the assumption is that this month might be extended uh, again, as we see the situation and what's happening globally. Um, there are a couple of points that I want to talk about. Uh, one, one key issue that I feel needs to be addressed, especially as we're talking in a political religious context, is what is happening when it comes to the occupation and what, ha what is happening when it comes to this assumed cooperation. As many of us know, and maybe are proud of to say that when it comes to the issue of addressing the Corona virus, there has been cooperation between the Palestinian Authority and the Israeli government. And, and people begin to ask the question, is this a sign of hope? Is this a sign of good faith uh, for things to move forward? And while I'm an optimist on many things, uh, for me, I would say, let us who believe in peace and want to actively engage in peace not see this as a sign of optimism. I think uh, what's happening, the reason why there is cooperation is because it is in the interest of the peoples that live close to each other in proximity with each other to address this issue as a medical issue so that infections won't rise. If there was a need, a, a desire for this to be cooperation that can lead to a political process, then we would see cooperation, for example, with Gaza, which has not happened yet at all uh, when it comes to the Israeli government and uh, those who are in Gaza. Uh, so for me, this is a sign that there is no good faith in this. Another issue to take into account is that the occupation continues. The occupation has not let ease on the Palestinian community. Uh, land confiscation, settlement building and expansion continues without stop. Uh, raids and violence by settlers towards Palestinians and Palestinian farms has continued also without stop. And so at the political level, we don't see cooperation. This is where I want to encourage at this time for us to be able to be in a place where we begin to ask as civil society that we are going through this, where we at, at least recognize that we are all one, one human family that is facing this together. What can we do and begin to engage in to, to lobby, to call for, to advocate, to actively engage in achieving uh, peace uh, in this land? What is very, very important to say in the situation here, we are, uh, the Palestinian community is holding itself, but the, the possibility of economic collapse is growing and the need by many Palestinians is increasing as well. Um, as I said, we are under lockdown. Uh, Bejala and Bethlehem and Beit Sahur, all of these areas are completely divided uh, from each other. We cannot move between one or the other. We only leave our homes, as many of you now, but it's been going on for a while now, just for the basic uh, necessities. And, and there is fear as to what this, this can lead to in a, a society, the Palestinian society that is under occupation, that we don't have freedoms like many, many other states uh, do around the world. And economically, we are fully dependent on the Israeli economic system. This is why uh, all new infections that are reported in the Palestinian Authority are reported from Palestinian laborers who worked either in settlements or inland Israel and came back home. And the Palestinian Authority has been engaging just in the last few weeks to try, uh, last few days, to try to put a, a stop uh, to that. And, and sadly, uh, again, due to the uh, tremendous economic conditions that we will face, these uh, men and women are risking their lives and their families' lives to go uh, for uh, basic uh, 
finances to get their, their food ratios. So again, uh, I'll, I'll end with this by saying there is a, a desire, there is a call. I am a person, and I've shared this with many people, look at what is happening in the devastation that it is as a possibility, an opportunity for us, Palestinians, Israelis, Christians, Muslims, Jews, however we identify ourselves in this land, to begin to treat each other differently, to engage with each other differently, to begin to build trust and relationships with each other. Times for hatred and fear are over. That, that is the biggest virus that we've been living with for decades. Uh, now it is time to put all these illusions of fear and hatred that we have towards each other and really end this occupation, end this conflict and, it's, and achieve real sense of peace and justice and equality in this land. Thank you very much, Sami. Uh, it's quite interesting the way you're looking at this cooperation in quite a critical lens um, and also uh, calling for people to also unite behind this in a perhaps a, behind this uh, combat of the virus in a, in a real way. Thank you very much. We'll move on now to our second speaker. Our second speaker is Rabbi Rinat Svanya Schwartz. Um, she's originally from Jerusalem, but lives today in Kibbutz Na. She is the rabbi of a reform synagogue in the town of Shoam, which is a suburb of Tel Aviv. The congregation is very much involved in social and environmental projects in Shoam and the surrounding areas. Rabbi Rinat has a BA in psychology and two masters, one in educational counseling and the second in pluralistic uh, Jewish education and Jewish literature. So the floor is yours. Shalom Nikulam. Hi to everyone. Uh, slama. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm here to talk about what is the, the thing with this situation in a rabbi point of view, I think. This is why uh, what uh, is on my mind all the time. What is my role? in this situation as a rabbi. So I will start and say that at the beginning of all this uh, Corona uh, time, I read a very article that was very wise for me with uh, Professor David uh, uh, Pasig, which he said that the only thing that we need now for the right thing is to be in community, to feel community, to feel that we are together and what we understand now is the community of being together is something that now it's complicated because how you be together when you can't be together. So, you know, we do the Zoom and Kabbalot Shabbat, praying together, but how you feel community when you're not with each other. This is something also, I don't know if you read or see what's happening in Israel now with all the religious communities which now can't be together. You can pray together, you can be surrounded with your people that always together. So this is a big question of how being community, and I will tell you more than that, in the next week we have, you know, Seder Pesach, which is the most important holiday in the Jewish family. Um, wherever you are in Israel or not in Israel, this is the most important um, holiday. And you meet all your family and you're together with them and you have all the stress of your family. But this is part of the thing. So what you do now with the Seder? And uh, this is a huge question. Are you doing Seder with Zoom? Um, and, and it brings us all to understand also now we think about, you know, the old people. We think about people that don't have someone to be with. But, you know, every year we have that. Every year we have people that don't have people to be with. Every, every year we have these things. So it's, it's make us um, think about Corona time, but all the time is something like that. And... I will add another thing about community. What is my community? 
Is my community is only Shoham? Is my community is only my kibbutz? Is my community is only Israel? Is my community is only Jews? Is my co- who who is my community? When I talk about community, and as a community, as uh, John said in Shoham, um, Shoham is an, it's a it's like a small city, um, twenty five thousand people. It's not so much, and uh, we have a great connection with the uh, Lord and Ramle. So I talk to people in Lord and Ramle, and I ask, okay. So do you need help? How can we be, feel community, Arab, Jews, um, Muslims, Christian together? And we did a great project together of taking care of the old people in all the big community, not just in Shoham, not just like interfaith thing. And I will say another thing that, um, that I thought about, you know, about, uh, about conflict and about uh, about, you know, like crisis. dealing with a crisis. Yes. How we deal with a crisis, because this is a huge crisis, but I will say something about uh, what I understand about Judaism is the best things that happened to Judaism happened after crisis. Um, you know, after the temple was uh, destroyed, so we had the the rabbis that uh, thought, you know, not sacrifice, go with your heart with praying. So the most important thing in our religious came from crisis. So I think maybe maybe also in this term of uh, of situation, maybe from this crisis, there will be become, you know, a good solution and a good thinking about what is your community not only you not only your people this is something more than that and maybe from this crisis we can grow up together as um, as all the religious uh, that we have in the middle east um another thought that i had is about how we can be more creativity maybe also in terms of dialogue we have now opportunity to be a very yes uh, creativity you know like what we are doing now maybe i don't have to come you don't have to come to my house maybe i don't have to come to your house and we can still speak but at the second level, we will have to be with each other, <laughs> not just in Zoom or in webinar. Um, so this is for me as, as a rabbi to think what are the opportunities as a community, as a religious, and as people to people. And most of these, I think, you know, all the all the religion, um, the faith that this part of being in a crisis is a part of growing, growing together. So this is me for now. Thank you very much, Rabbi Renat. Uh, thank you for those reflections about what a community is and belonging to a community, um, and also the ideas of bre- using the crisis uh, for new opportunities. Thank you very much. So our third speaker is Dr. Tabit Aburas. He is this, the co-CEO of the Abraham Initiatives, which strives to fulfill the and promote uh, equal citizenship and complete equality of social and political rights for Israel's Jewish and Arab citizens. He has a lot of experience in NGO work uh, when it comes to promoting human rights and peace building. He he holds a PhD in the field of geography and regional development. He has taught courses at the Ben Gurion University and Sapir College. And he he is an author of many publications uh, in the media and also academic publications about Israel's Arab and Jewish relations. So we welcome you, thank you. 
Thank you, John. Uh, thank you all. Uh, actually, I would like to thank you for your emotional space. And we, I know that you all uh, preoccupied with similar uh, problems. Still, you have the time to think about us across the uh, overseas. So I would like to focus on the uh, vulnerability of the Arab citizens inside Israel, the Arab minority in Israel. But before that, I would like to say that my heart and my brain goes to the, all the people in the homeland. Uh, in the homeland, for me, to my relatives in Hebron, my half of my family in Gaza Strip and all over. Uh, because all of a sudden we are really equal. Finally, we are equal. Uh, we have uh, actually facing the same uh, threat. Uh, and uh, I, I just mentioned that, uh, that we are all equal and all we are facing the same uh, threat. Uh, but still the Arab citizens inside Israel, they are more vulnerable than the Jewish majority inside Israel. And I think this is because, first of all, the conditions of the Arab uh, community, because a uh, majority-minority relations, issue of trust, and I would like just to go up uh, to talk about some of these uh, uh, challenges and then to end up with a positive statement. Uh, I, be I believe if you just uh, take a look to the Israeli unemployment rate today, which reached 25%, one quarter, okay? Over 1 million Israeli workers, actually employees, laid off. Uh, uh, and they, they still, the Arab workers really are coming, most of the Arab workers are coming from uh, the occupied lower, uh, uh, low income jobs, blue collar jobs, and they are the first to be uh, fired from their work. Uh, their share in the unemployment rate is very high, even higher than uh, their percentage, uh, total percentage. Uh, and those real workers today cannot really relocate their work. They not, cannot go out uh, and uh, uh, look for uh, different works. After all, the, the crisis is one crisis for all. So unstable unemployment is one reason for the vulnerability. But we can keep talking about the, uh, the fact that uh, in Israel, there are over 30,000 NGOs uh, that operate uh, in the country, the majority acting as the uh, service providers, but they are not acting within the Arab community. So the Arab minority in Israel left for local initiatives for the Islamic movement that is doing great job in helping the poor people uh, and uh, enlarge the civil society in Israel, not really uh, ready for such uh, uh, situation. Uh, I believe that all in all that the Arab community also are not ready for in, in terms of emergency preparedness. In the, in the past, the, the lack of experience uh, in logistics and crisis management in the Arab towns also, uh, all of the national crises that Israel, Israel and the Israeli people have witnessed is uh, conflict-related emergencies that we are kind of alienated as Arabs, alienated from such a, a, a crisis. But the most important thing, we are more vulnerable than others within the state of Israel because of cultural norms and also faith. Uh, well, uh, the, in Israel, Arab society is consists of large families. I think the situation is similar in Gaza and the West Bank also. Uh, they are living, limiting, uh, living in limiting, uh, very limited space and in close pro proximity. Senior citizen is normal to live with the family also. Uh, it's, it's a cultural norm. It's very acceptable. It's, uh, uh, everybody is just, nobody is giving up is elderly uh, uh, people, uh, fathers and parents. Uh, and now uh, Arab society community focused, uh, I I will say that uh, in terms of praying, they are so social gathering or praying together. Uh, communal prayer, especially the Friday prayer, 
is the most prefer preferable uh, prayer. So nobody would like to give such a prayer. Now changing such a behavior of get, being together, it's really very tough. Add to that the fact that uh, from religious uh, perspective, uh, uh, with similarity to the Haredic uh, uh, Jews, the Orthodox Jews, uh, uh, population, uh, many Arab citizens have their faith in God, in Allah. Whatever Allah is have to do, will do. So actually, uh, this is no need, there is no need for precaution uh, action. We, we just uh, witnessed that. Uh, so I can go ahead and count many other reasons, but one of the most important thing is the lack of a trust in Israeli government. Well, just pay attention to what's going on in terms of politics. Today, the face of the Israeli politics, Netanyahu is coming to the Israeli TV, talking with the Israeli public, and even treating us, he's calling us, when you talk about the Israeli people, the Jews and the non-Jews, okay? The Jews and the non-Jews. Can you imagine I'm saying in this homeland there is Arab and non-Arabs, okay? Well, it's uh, humiliating, it's insulting. And this man, okay, the prime minister is, have been, actually has been uh, generating a lot of, a lot of, uh, I will say, uh, frustration among the Arab uh, citizens. Having said that, I, 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 I would like to pay attention to the fact that something good is going on in the hospital. We have to pay attention to the Arab and Jewish heroes in the Israeli hospitals. Uh, fighting together the COVID-19, uh, physicians, nurses, uh, even staff uh, people. Uh, well, they are doing all necessary means to try to save life of Jews and Arabs together. And uh, I'm telling you, while we are Arab citizens making up around 20% of the total population, I know, we know that over 30% of the total staff in the hospitals are Arabs now. Well, uh, I believe it's time for better treatment uh, of the Arab citizen. I think it's, it's about time to treat the Arabs as equal and full citizen in the state of Israel, and they should be integrated in all arenas, including politics. Without that, we will not progress. Thank you for in this stage. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abouras. It's, it's actually quite interesting uh, and important to think about, uh, even though all of us are affected by the virus, to think about the most vulnerable people uh, that are being affected uh, by the virus. So at this stage, uh, I'd like to thank all three speakers for their brief uh, sort of presentations. And now we'll move to a more sort of conversation uh, stage. Um, so I'll start with Sami. Sami, you can start with perhaps a reflection. It can be a question, uh, comparison, contrast. Uh, feel free to, to go ahead with it. Yeah, uh, thank you for this. And, and thank you for the speakers as well for what they shared. Um, for me, I mean, I think because we, all, the speakers talked about the religious uh, aspects. Uh, I would also say that Easter is also coming up for us uh, as well. Uh, Palm Sunday and uh, all of the events that come with it. And uh, also being in these questions, what will happen uh, in these celebrations. Uh, but but I'm, as, as I reflect on uh, Dr. Abu Ras, what he said, uh, the idea is that we really need to reach a point where we treat each other equally on all levels, uh, not just in terms of this issue and the uh, and the coronavirus. On all level levels, we need to do this. And and for me, he mentioned, of course, the Palestinian population that lives in 48 in Israel. But for me, it's also to for us to advocate to push for all Palestinians everywhere uh, to be treated as equal. We. Whether we like it or not, whether we admit it or not, we all live under the umbrella of the Israeli government. We live under the Israeli occupation. And therefore, Israel, in terms of human right law and in terms of moral responsibility, they are accountable for everything that happens under that umbrella. And, and specifically, because Abu Ras mentioned Gaza, and I want to reiterate the fact that the biggest worry that we have is in what can happen in Gaza if this 
uh, virus enters Gaza and spread. They have been very careful in holding and quarantining Palestinians who have it. And again, all of them, uh, the last group of Palestinians that had it, nine of them were came back uh, because of their working uh, in Israel. If this virus spreads in Israel, it'll be a disaster that we have never seen before. There is no facilities. The medical uh, teams there are burnt out from all the violence that has happened over the years. The hospitals cannot sustain any of this. And so from now, from now, it is very urgent that, again, those who are responsible, whatever they want to call them, to really begin to prepare and to engage in this. This thing doesn't look like it will end anytime soon. We have to prepare. And again, not because we will not be affected by people from Gaza. We don't do anything. This is a human rights issue and a concern for all of us that will lead to even more violence and more conflict if the situation in Gaza is not dealt with. Thank you, Sami. Uh, Renata, I'll give you also an opportunity now to uh, give a reaction to what has been said as well. Yeah. Um, firstly, I want to say for Sami, um, what you say now, it's very, very, it's hard to think about what, what can happen. And um, as you say before, you know, the, um, the cooperation that we see now is, you know, it's coming from interest <laughs> for uh, the both sides have the same interests. Maybe, as you say, the interest should be human rights. <laughs> yes, and maybe not, you know, not to, but I will go back to the thing that I said, maybe from crisis something can come can come good and i want to add um for me as an um as someone you know i spoke about the um, the question the big question who, who is my community it's a big question for everyone and for me to be part to, for me to be part of this panel and to you know for because when you are in trouble, most of the time you think about yourself, yourself, your family, your friends. And, but you know what the Corona gave us? Also the time. There is a lot of time that you're not just in stress of what is about you and your family and your friends. Now you can see more than that because people, when they are in pressure, they think only about themselves, but now, we are in, pre in, in a different pressure. We are in pressure, but with time. We have time to think, to think how and why, and to become more and more look and see, no, not, I'm responsible not for my, only my family. I'm responsible for more from the human family. I'm responsible for all the people surrounded me and the world. And this is, I think, why this, um, you know, this specific Corona giving us something deeper, because it's not just like a war or, you know, a crisis that uh, you don't have time. And so you think just for yourself or for your family. Now you have time. So to open your mind, and to see everybody is in crisis, in the same crisis. Everybody is, as um, Tabat Abura said, we are all in the same hospital or not in the same hospital, but we know what's happening. So it's a great time to understand that this crisis is it's crisis with time to think more about everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Renat. Uh, I'll, I'll let you jump in, uh, Dr. Buras. Yeah, I believe you are in a moment of truth. Uh, in my mind right now, the elderly man, around 90 years old, just is my neighbor. And I, it happened that I live very close to the mosque in my town, the great mosque here. And each time he is going to the mosque and the mosque is closed. Nobody is there. And he is asking, he cannot comprehend 
how how come it never happened? He said, I'm 90 years old. I am in this town. That the mosque is there. What happened is he, people tried to convince him that there is coronavirus. He cannot really understand what's coronavirus all about, okay? I really feel a little bit, it's challenging for us now from even the religious point of view to convince people that we are in different stage. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenge for Muslims, probably for Jews now, uh, now for Muslims at least, uh, how to celebrate the whole month of Ramadan. I would like just to mention what's Ramadan for Muslims. It's, it's about eating together, praying a lot, okay? Get together, it's social and uh, religious gathering. They cannot do that. It's unprecedented since the uh, proclamation of the state of Israel. Never happened such a case. Now, this is maybe the bad thing uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that people cannot really practice their religion as they want to, to practice. But uh, my question is, since the corona united us, how come we cannot really think about that we are all in the same level and we have to care about each other in the homeland and to try to go ahead to progress? Why we have to cooperate only in the issue of corona, fighting corona or security coordination, uh, collaboration? We, we are human beings in this homeland, Jews, Arabs, Christians, everybody. We should find, fight, not only the corona, fight for peace. And we have to live in peace. As long as I am an Israeli and I am also Palestinian at the same time, I would like to see my people and my country is living together in peace. It's about time to pray for Jews in Esther, in Pesach, sorry, in, in Passover, Esther, in Ramadan. Maybe to pray together for peace, for just solution for the Palestinians and for the Israelis, for everybody. The crisis should teach us to go ahead toward peace and humanity and to try to care about each other more than it's taking place right now. Thank you very much. Uh, before I, I ask the speakers if they want to continue uh, to have one more round of, of comments, I would like to invite the viewers online, if you have any questions, do write to us in the Q&A icon in Zoom, or if you're on Facebook, do write on the live chat your question. So uh, before we, we move on to the Q&A session, Sami, if you want to jump in once more, uh, you can go ahead. Yeah, I just want to commend the, the speakers for what they shared and, and the emotion that came out and just to express uh, my agreement. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I, I really believe in what uh, Dr. Oberal said, and, and this is an opportunity. Uh, but for me, when I reflect on, on how opportunities happen or how change happens, uh, the reality that I see it is that it takes two ways for change to happen. Either it takes something to happen for a long time or a decision. And yes, there, now we are beginning to see a few of us an, an opportunity to be engaged uh, in calling for real peace, real justice and equality in this land, how we are speaking about this virus, how it's uniting us. But, but I feel that either a real decision needs to be made to begin real negotiations and engage in peace work, or it is going to take time where even more systems will collapse, more conflicts will rise. And then from that, like we say in Arabic, it has to fully collapse for it to rise again. Now we're seeing sort of a few of the building blocks begin to fall. And, and this is why, again, like Dr. said, like Rav said, yeah. it is time we need to urge, we need to move, we need to build community, re-understand what community is, build relationships between communities. Even if we identify ourselves as different communities, it does not negate the building of relationships of trust and respect uh, between us. Thank you, Sami. Uh, Rinat, do you wanna say one more thing before we go to Q&A? Um, yes, I want to say that it's, uh, for me, it's always interesting to see um, that when you are talking about religious, when you put religious in the picture, not just, you know, 
the politics and people that you know do whatever they think is right when you put religious in you see how similar all the people are in these religious um as you say pesach Pes uh, pascha ramadan um we all together in these communities we all think the same way of how to be together and how to help each other so sometimes for me i wish for our uh, our place and our people to think more from the religious point of view maybe it will help us that's it Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rinat. Uh, Dr. Aburas, Abu any uh, last word before the Q&A? You're good? Okay. So I just would like to thank the three speakers uh, that you emotionally really engaged in this situation and some of the... He was, he was in, on mute maybe now. No, no, that's fine. I said I will wait for the questions. That's fine. Ah, okay. <laughs> so thank you for tackling... Uh, some of the real issues, honestly, and also looking at this as, as an opportunity uh, for change. Uh, we have a question from the audience, so I'll give it to, to Sarah. Just, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, now you can hear me. Um, we have a few questions from the audience. Um, I, uh, I will think I, I will I will ask a few and each of you can uh, you know decide which ones uh, you would like to answer. Um, the first question was uh, that um, somebody has heard that Israeli security forces have demolished temporary coronavirus treatment centers in the West Bank and they wanted to know whether that's true. I don't know uh, if Sammy uh, knows anything about that. Um, <clears throat> A request to uh, to uh, Renat um, as to whether you could tell us anything about the current situation in the Orthodox Jewish communities and 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 what's going on there. Um, and um, uh, all, uh, and a question about what people around the world uh, can do to support people working for peace uh, here here in the Holy Land at this time and in this context. So let's start with uh, those, those three questions and we'll see if, th if there are more. So perhaps uh, we can go in the same, same circle again, if uh, Sami, you go first and then Renat and then uh, Dr. Abu yeah. No, I mean, I actually just checked the phone to see if there is any news. I, I have not heard uh, of, of the destruction of uh, uh, centers, coronavirus centers in the West Bank by the Israeli military. I have, I, so I don't have any on, view on this. So I'll leave the rest of the questions for a little later. So I, I will say the people that asked me about the Orthodox or ultra-Orthodox people in Israel, I think that like uh, what uh, Dr. Tabat Abuwa said about his neighbor, that don't understand why he can't go to the misgad, why he can't go. So this is, I think this is part of the thing because people, when you, we are, they used to go three times a day to a synagogue. They used to be surrounded with the community. They used to, you know, worship God all the day. So what, what we will do now? How can we just be and, you know, I think sometimes you think, ah, you don't trust God if, uh, if you're not going to be with a community. So I think this is, it's, it's hard, exactly as Dr. Tabet said, because to come to, to, to someone and said, you have to change all your way of pressure your God and, beha and religious behavior, it's very hard. A lot of people said that uh, the Israeli government haven't done haven't done it right at the beginning. Like now they are like in stress of uh, you know um, and telling people 
you know, in Bnei Brak, they, they are actually, you know, uh, blocked all the way coming out and coming in to Bnei Brak. Um, that people can't go in and co can't go out from Bnei Brak because Bnei Brak now, uh, there is a lot of people that have Corona. So this is hard. It's, it's very hard to say to people, stop what you're doing, change your way of thinking and your way of pressure your God. I think, but most of the Haredian, which the media won't show them, yes, most of them are um, going with the rules, but people, but there are people that are not. It's very hard. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, uh, Dr. Aburas. Yeah, I just would like to add, regarding the destruction of the coronavirus center yeah, that took place, I also heard about it uh, in southern Hebron area, I guess. But all in all, I would love to see that the policy of destruction of houses taking place still in the Negev, even nowadays. And uh, it's pity uh, that uh, instead of taking care of the people of the unrecognized, Bedouin unrecognized villages, uh, that they're really facing severe situation uh, more than anybody else uh, with large families uh, with the family with 10 and 15 kids it's uh, it's really uh, something very dangerous now i just read here a question about what uh, the panelists think or, or can do uh, what the people around the world can do at that, this time well, uh, not a lot actually, because uh, you all preoccupied with the same problem. Uh, we, we really highly appreciate your uh, uh, emotional space that you are giving us to talk with you about the issue of the people of the Holy Land. But no doubt you can pray for us, you can call us, talk with us and support us in all means. You, you will decide what to do. Yeah, I want to share that uh, one of the attendees, Rachel, just put a link to the report about the demolition. And it's a report by Beit Salem, an Israeli organization. So people, participants can go and see information and the article on that. Uh, yeah, and maybe I'll build uh, just on what Dr. Aboraz said about what people can do. Uh, and I would say, yes, the, the, we are now all living times where we're all facing the same crisis and people are engaging in taking care of their own. Uh, but, but I also want to say that this is an opportunity. I, I love Rav when she said, like, this is a time that we could really look and change. And I think what we can begin to do is to begin to change our view and our behavior towards the Holy Land. And especially I say this to people of faith who are watching us, how they have historically related to this land, how they have historically related to all the people in this land, how we have used and abused our faith to follow certain political agendas and, and dismiss certain voices out of the equation. Uh, this land is loved by Jews, Christians, and Muslims in this land and around the world. And, and you have kind of left us for many, many years siding with one over the other and allowing us to fight and spell our blood on this land and have the blood bleed back on us as well. So this, I say, is an opportunity for people of faith globally to begin engaging in what campaigns, uh, advocacies, uh, again, activism in their areas when the opportunity comes to demand a new understanding of the sacredness and the holiness of this land. This is not just about finding a political solution. Jews, Christians, and Muslims love this land. Dividing this land with a green line or yellow line or red line doesn't make it less loved by the communities. Uh, Jews who see in the West Bank more of their religious history than in the state of Israel love this and call it their land. As a Palestinian, I come from a Christian background. And my Christianity is not just confined to Bethlehem because it's under the Palestinian authority control. My Christianity is manifested in Jerusalem, in Nazareth, and the Galilee, where Jesus taught and where he lived. And so it's not going to make it less loved by me. So people of faith now, I think, locally and globally, can actually begin to engage in demanding and maybe even coming up with a new vision as we have seen, everything else has failed until this point. So maybe this is an opportunity for faith to play a role 
not just secular politics. I have a question uh, uh, from from Valentina from the International uh, Vondine Peace Center. Uh, she says that here in Europe, uh, they have an, uh, the narrative about the idea that we are fighting a war against the virus. I know that that has been the terminology certainly used uh, um, by, by the Prime Minister, uh, amongst others. What do you feel about that image? What do you, what do you, what's your opinion about that image of fighting a war against the virus? I can go for that. Uh, I believe, uh, first of all, I really would like to say that I uh, would like to share our love and the prayer from the Holy Land to the people around the world, especially to the people in Europe, especially the Italian, the Spanish, the people of the UK that really, really suffers the most in Europe right now, in the United States too. Uh, well, I can say that I believe that I'm very critical to the Israeli government. It seems to me that the Israeli government doing better job than other countries around the world. I don't feel we are in the war, in a war, but however, we're really in very strange situation. Maybe the war is ahead of us two weeks from now, hopefully not, hopefully not. And, uh, but no doubt that uh, war, after war needs peace. We have Europeans and the Middle Eastern people, and people around the world should rethink peace and war. What does that mean? How they can cooperate? For me, what we need, the, the humanity needs more cooperation, more equality and more justice to try to solve the problems of the globe all. I will say that I love the term dealing with the situation. <laughs> and uh, war is a, um, and it's more scary war, you know, like to, to give people a reason to, to be afraid and to be scared. I think to, to give people a hope is to say we are dealing with the situation. We want to cooperate. We want to think together. War is um, is bringing not good uh, vibes. <laughs> yeah, I, I also agree uh, because those who are using that that concept of war uh, are people who have been in a sense calling for war and engaging in war, and and their rise to power came out of this notion of promoting fear and war and scaring their community so that they would give even up more power. If I am, if my community is going into war and is afraid of something, then I would give authority more power, more of my freedom. And this is something that many, many people around the world are beginning to feel, especially by those who are using, at the leadership level, using this language. So we have to engage in this differently. Uh, for me, I also look at this in terms, uh, something we haven't discussed is, uh, this is an, a wake-up call for us to also see how we as humans have been such a virus <laughs> uh, to this planet and to all creation in this planet. You know, if people of faith, you know, in, in, in the Bible, at least in the Torah, the text is God created earth. He didn't make earth. He didn't invent it. Created the same word created humans, created life. So we have to acknowledge that this planet we live on also is a living entity. Uh, and and we have done so much damage. We have done so much destruction. The last two incidences, the the fires in in uh, the Amazon and and in Australia, like what do we expect would be the reaction? Uh, so maybe in a sense, the war is happening the other way around. Uh, the Earth trying to save us and itself from us. I, uh, I think we're going to uh, stop there. We plan to finish by 6.30. Uh, I want to thank our panelists hugely. Thank you so much for your words of, of critique, of wisdom, of, of both religious and political. Uh, it's been a great pleasure and a great honor to have you with us tonight.
I want to thank John for facilitating and for, and for suggesting this in the first place. If our audience members would like to suggest further panels that they would like us to, uh, to organize uh, and, and, or communicate with us uh, in, other, in other manners, not only uh, uh, over Zoom, uh, please feel free to contact us. Um, we are planning also to do some webinars in, in Hebrew for the local, uh, local, particularly Israeli population about what is going on in the Palestinian community, uh, both within Israel uh, and in Palestine. Um, I think everybody here, both attendees and panelists, I think we all share a huge concern, uh, particularly for the situation in Gaza uh, uh, and what might play out there. Uh, and, and I think we all join in our prayers in the, these upcoming festivals um, that, that together we can overcome this and that uh, um, people should be healthy uh, and, and wishing everybody a happy Passover, a happy Easter, a good Ramadan uh, when we get there and uh, good health to everybody. Thank you very much.